All right, so in my last video, I was showing you how I actually use my FL Studio template in like a real world setting. And then uh, we created this instrument. And in this video, I wanna show you how I'd actually uh, edit my notes and show you like my workflow and stuff like that. So um, if you guys didn't watch the last video, you guys can go back. And if not, this is uh, the drum loop of you know what we created. So this is what it sounds like, and then we'll get into the video. Okay, so let's just get right into it. Where we left off before was uh, we just had our drum loop. I showed you how I routed, um, you know, all these to their own subgroup. And then how I routed um, those to like, you know, the actual inserts uh, to take advantage of like reverb and delay, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then at the very end of the video, I um, we recorded this instrument. And I haven't touched it since. This is exactly at the very, very end of the video. Um, and this is what it sounds like. So we want to start going in and, and editing this. So. so everything's out of time. So I'm gonna show you, you know, how I'd edit this. So most of the time I usually do quantize um, depending on how, like, so sometimes when I play, okay, nice, it's on guitar. But sometimes when I'm actually um, recording, um, sometimes it's more just kind of chord based of like, so that's more like chord based. It's, there's not so much kind of uh, playing in between like, and when I play like that, that makes editing a little trickier. So the reason why I was saying that is because up here, like the, the magnet, you have different snap settings. So you can go really, really fine. So when you zoom in, like you can see you have all these like in-betweens. And like, again, hopefully you can see this on YouTube because I know back in the day, the quality wasn't there to see like these lines. But, you know, if you go like half beat, as you can see, so in between each note, it's like you only have half a beat. So you don't really have much flexibility on where you want to place your sounds. So the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of times I do quantize, but it doesn't mean I quantize on a setting like, let's say, half beat. Because watch this, you're going to see all these notes, they're all going to stretch to areas where they don't belong. Okay, so if we listen, you know, it might sound fine, but it's not what I played. So we'll listen. doesn't sound bad so like those in between notes by quantizing to a snap like I just did I don't have that flexibility so we're gonna go down to maybe like half a step and then I will quantize but it just quantizes it so that it makes it easier to edit okay so now we're just gonna go in we're just gonna hit play I'm just gonna edit and you can kind of see what I'm doing <laughs> Okay, so sometimes um, just the way how when I recorded, everything is kind of out of sync, as you can hear. Um, so this could just be a matter of bringing it all back. And that just might be a quick fix. And then it just might be some fine edits. So like, like these notes. Okay, so instead of bringing it back like I did, I'm gonna bring it forward. Okay, so once I get my notes to this point, this is where I start to manually go in and edit notes, whether that be kind of nudging them um, or affecting velocity 
or adding notes in or removing notes, extending their lengths, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm doing is um, I hold down control and click and I highlight, you can hold down alt. It removes the snap so that you're not stuck to this snap. And then also um, if you hold down alt on a note and the scroll wheel, um, you can adjust the individual volume. And then if you hold on shift and the scroll wheel, that allows you to nudge. So I'm just telling you this now so that I don't have to keep stopping and explaining that. So again, shift and scroll wheel is how you nudge. Alt and scroll wheel is the actual note. And then alt on the actual lengths, you can do this too. Okay, so here we go. So to duplicate, I'm going to hold on shift and click and it allows me to move this over. So I just want to change these notes around a bit. So Also, there's one thing I'd like to mention about uh, once it actually comes time mixing um, these left hand notes, many times I will remove them and I'll like duplicate this and I'll paste them in. And now I'm able to mix both the left hand notes and the right hand notes differently. Um, I don't always do this, but if I feel that like the left hand has a lot of bass energy and then driving force. I will separate it like this so that I can just route this to another mixer insert and just mix that differently. You know, maybe in this case, I don't want this to have as much uh, delay or reverb, if any. 
um, or I might want to distort it a little harder. Whereas like the upper notes, then I can, you know, load on reverb and delay and stuff like that. And then that way it still keeps my low end clean. Um, that's just uh, a route you can take. All right, so that was just a little walkthrough on how I would actually edit my notes and stuff like that. Um, again, in, you know, like when I'm actually making a video, it's quite hard to, you know, add in your notes and listen and, you know, do that kind of stuff. But just in general, that is what I do is I'd start kind of, you know, nudging certain, you know, notes over, adjust velocity, um, you know, on these, like I might kind of add like different lengths and stuff like that, just so that every single hit is not so, you know, robotic. Um, and then in here, you know, if I compress it and EQ it and stuff like that, um, you can kind of get different sounds. And Right, so if you liked the video, be sure to give it a like. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And uh, if you guys want to see more videos from me, you guys can subscribe. And you know when I release them, you guys will get them. So hopefully you liked the video, and I'll talk to you later.